Hi, this is Lawrence from Materialize Belgium. In this tutorial video, we'll talk about the building blocks of Magix. At the end of this video, you'll be able to find your way around the user interface, and you'll become familiar with the geometric terminology of Magix so that you may use it to its full potential. Let's get started. First, here's our workspace. Our workspace is our sandbox. At the bottom left corner, you may also find the orientation cube, which may be used to quickly choose a different view orientation. We also have scenes. Scenes in Magix are the 3D representations of your machine. The user interface of Magix is based on ribbons. Every ribbon contains functions for a specific type of action in Magix. For instance, if we're looking for a function relevant to fixing, we can navigate to the fixing ribbon where we will find all the relevant fixing functions. Magix also has a quick access bar. The quick access bar can be found at the left top corner of the screen. From the quick access bar, we can easily start a new project, load a project, save a project, import parts, undo our actions or redo them, as well as unload any of the parts that we may choose to select. On top of that, if you're not able to retrieve a function in Magix easily, you may also make use of the quick search function. With the quick search function, we can type part of the name of any function we're trying to retrieve in Magix and immediately select it from the drop down list. For instance, if I type here the chamfer function, I can click on it and it'll immediately run that function. Besides that, Magix also has toolbars. On the main toolbar of Magix, you'll find a number of functions related to the viewing of our parts. For instance, this will allow us to easily change the visualization of our parts, for instance, to a shade visualization, triangle visualization, a bounding box visualization, combination between the shade and the wireframe visualization, and also gives us the ability to toggle on or off the transparency of our parts so that we may look on the inside. Next up on this toolbar, we have the marking tools. The marking tools are used in combination with other functions to modify specific functions of a part. We're going to see more about marking in a separate tutorial video. On the right hand side, we have our pages. Pages will allow us to visually inspect our part, fix our part, display information about our part, amongst other things. By default, the most used pages are open on the right hand side. Some pages we don't need all the time are accessible from a special pages toolbar. The first page we see is the part list, where we can see a list of our parts which are currently loaded. We can choose to select or deselect any of the parts directly from the part list. We can choose to hide or view certain parts. We have the option to change the visualization type straight away from the part list, as well as the option to choose to toggle on or off the transparency. We even have the option to change the color of our parts or look at other information such as the memory state, the name or the fixing info. Furthermore, by right-clicking, you can customize which information you would like to display in this list overview. In the Part Info tab just below, if I select one of my parts, we will be able to display information about individual parts on their coordinates, on their dimensions, the triangle number, the volume surface area, and so on. On Part Fixing Info, right next to it, we can quickly visualize the fixing status of our parts and perform semi-automatic fixing operations directly from this page. And on the Pages toolbar, the first page that we see is the multi-section page. Here we can choose to activate cross-sections on our parts. This could be either in a single dimension or a combination of multiple dimensions. If you'd like custom sections, you can also use other functions available here to change the specific placement of our section, such as by making use of the indicate button to choose specifically where we want to position the section on our part. Then we can make use of the clip functionality to choose to hide towards the origin or away from the origin of our section to um, hide certain areas of the part. Further down the toolbar, besides the multi-section, we have pages for fixing. We have some pages for measuring. Pages for creating your reports. Adding annotations, textures, 
and even pages for simulation and slice previewing. Now let's bring our parts back to their original states. The last but not least, Magix also comes with a context menu, which is also known as the right-click menu. The right-click menu contains different functions based on where you're right-clicking in Magix. For example, if you're right-clicking on the part, you're going to get a number of functions which are specific to the part. For example, as you can see here, we can choose to unload our parts, we can choose to translate our parts, rotate our parts, If you're clicking on the empty workspace, you're going to get a different context menu with functions for creating default parts, importing parts, and loading scenes. The user interface of Magix is fully customizable, so you can keep what you want to keep and remove what you want to remove. Let's move on to the geometric terminology of Magix. Here I'm going to need one part, so I'm going to hide the other two parts. Furthermore, I'm going to enable the triangle view so that I can show you this a little bit more easily. Then I'm going to select my parts and I'm going to use the marking tools, which will allow me to demonstrate different geometrical elements in Magix. So let's start with the triangle. The triangle has a normal and three edges. Ideally, every edge of a triangle must also touch the edge of another triangle. Triangles are the building blocks of STL file. Next on we have planes. A plane is defined by the distance and the angle between a click triangle and the triangle surrounding it, within the tolerance val value uh, specified. A plane can be considered relatively flat. Next on, the surface. Surface is similar to a plane, but the surface also takes curvature into account. In Magic, surfaces are rounded by a wireframe, and the last but not the least, the shell. A shell is an uninterrupted collection of triangles. So as you can see here, the surface stops based on the tolerance specified for the angle, whereas if I unmark my part and I make use of the shell, we'll see that the full part has been selected as this is a collection of uninterrupted triangles. Therefore, the whole part will be marked and all the triangles in this example are connected to each other. Thank you for watching and please make sure you check out our other tutorial videos for further questions about our software. Please don't hesitate to contact the support line of your nearest materialized office. Thank you and have a nice day.